This is a totally foolproof DIY tutorial for fixing a flat tire. This is really simple to do and I will show you all the steps of how to do it properly with some extra tips to make sure you won't have the next flat tire tomorrow and you will not even have to take off the wheel. You will need a bike repair kit which is usually under five euro and you can find it in bike shops, department stores or online. Inside that you should have tire levers in either metal or plastic, glue and patches to mend your puncture. It doesn't matter whether they are pre-cut or not. Obviously, if they're not, you'll need a pair of scissors to cut them to size, chalk, and then sandpaper. And finally, an air pump. In rare occasions, if your hole leaks really slowly, you might need a container for water, water, and some kind of towel or tissue. So yeah, I have a flat tire and as you can hear, spring is on its way, so it's time to fix my bike. First of all, you want to turn over your bike so that you can reach and easily spin the wheel in question. There are three kinds of bike valves. I'm working with a wood valve, or so-called Dunlop valve, which is common on most European, like German or Dutch bikes. Most UK and US bikes have a Presta valve or a Schrader valve. This tutorial will work with any of these, you just need to make sure that you have the right pump or pump adapter to get going. Unscrew the dust cap. Taking these bits apart, I've made it a habit to throw the disassembled pieces into the lid of my repair kit. That way, I can't lose them or accidentally kick them into the gutter, for example. Now screw off the top nut. This frees up the pin of the valve, which you could pull out now, or as I'm doing, unscrew the rim nut first, which holds the valve stem into place on your rim, and then tug it out. The order doesn't matter. As you can see, the stem is now loose. For the next step, to be able to get to the inner tube, we need to move aside the outer tyre. For this, your repair kit should have some tyre levers. They come in plastic or in metal, although the metal ones are pretty old-fashioned and they might damage the inside tubing, so stick to the plastic version if you have the option. As the tyre is snugly fit in the rim, you might want to squeeze it a bit to loosen it up. The lever has a side that looks a bit like a spoon. You want to place the concave side, so the side where your finger fits in, towards the tyre. Don't start exactly at the valve, as this is a really delicate spot. You can actually place your first lever anywhere on the rim except there. Spoon the lever between the tyre and the rim, and then hook it to the spoke to hold it in that position. Slip it under the edge of the tyre, pull back and lift it away from the wheel. Move along the wheel about 10 to 15 centimeters and repeat. It gets easier and easier as you're going along until you only need one lever to dislodge the tire all the way around. Nice. It's the inflatable inner tube that is damaged, so we want to take it out to be able to inspect it. Gently pull out the tube from anywhere and pull out the valve last. That way the tension of the tube around the wheel is gone and it'll be easier to get out. Be a little bit careful not to get it stuck in the chain. The rubber the tube is made of is relatively tough, as long as it doesn't get caught on any sharp edges. Now let's find the hole. Put the valve back together. We don't need the rim nut, but to inflate it, we need the pin and the top nut to hold it in place so that the air doesn't come out when we start pumping. Now pump up the tube. Most pumps also have a catch with which you can fixate the pump head to the valve. Otherwise, you can also just hold the pump head to the valve while pumping. Push all the way through with each stroke when you pump. Now, you might already hear a hissing sound that tells you where the puncture is at. If not, move your hand around the inner tube as a slight distance until you feel an airstream somewhere. If you can't feel it, Hold your ear up close and try listening to where you might hear a hiss. In case none of that helps, it means you have a really, really small hole and you can fill a bucket or any kind of container with water and slide the tubing through it until you see bubbles emerge and then you'll know where the puncture is. Now we want to stick a patch on the puncture to fix it. So we want to dry the tube while remembering where the hole is and then mark the hole with some chalk. Now we can deflate the tube, knowing exactly where our hole is at. 
There are several kind of patches available. Some you can cut out yourself and some come ready. There are different sizes. Obviously, the larger the hole, the larger the patch should be. In case your hole is anywhere close to a centimetre, it would be better to just replace the whole tube for a new one. Now get out the sandpaper. We want to roughen up the spot around the puncture to make the adhesive stick better. I'll just renew the chalk so I don't lose my mark while sanding. Out comes the glue. You can be pretty generous with it. Make sure you have a paste-like layer, as big or a little bit wider than the patch that you're going to use. Now let it settle for a bit. I even blow on it a little until it turns matte or even goes a bit milky before I peel the patch and press it on firmly. By the way, it's normal that the patch itself is not super sticky. That's what the glue is for. Now, before we pump up the tube again, we really want to let the glued patch settle. In the meantime, we can check where the hole might have come from. Check the distance and the direction of the hole from the valve. Maybe hold it to the wheel to know where exactly it happened. You want to inspect this spot thoroughly. Run your fingers along the hole of the inside just in case and shake it a bit to make any debris fall to the bottom. Also check the outside of the tyre here. Sometimes you'll find a piece of glass hidden in the profile and they would cause you to have the next flat tomorrow, which is obviously super annoying. We don't want any bits of glass or stone on the inside of the tyre when we put everything back together. It's been a couple of minutes, so I'm just going to give it a quick pump to make sure there's no second hole anywhere and that our fix is good. Run my fingers along the sides again, feeling for any air, but it's looking good. Right, time to get the tube back in place inside the outer tire. This time I want to start out by putting the valve shaft in first. That way everything will be in place and I won't have too much tension on the tube while putting the valve back in. Instead of putting the tube onto the ring, I am shoving it up into the casing of the outer tire. It's a bit easier. Just make sure you don't have any twists in the tube and again mind the chain. Now that that's done, I can reassemble the valve completely, but I won't totally tighten the rim nut just yet. Again, starting at the valve, I'll pop the tire back into the rim and continue along the tire left and right from the valve. Some tires are tighter than others, so you might again need some help from the levers, but it's always better to use your hands than the levers because they can damage the inside tubing. Now pump the tube up, but not completely. You might realize that the air is not distributing evenly and you could end up with a lump. Here you can see that the wheel is not turning smoothly. I've got a lump of air around the valve. That's why you only want to inflate it a little. In case you've already gone too far, just take some air out again. And then massage and tap the tire all around. That will give you an even distribution and you are now ready to fully inflate. And that's it. Screw the dust cap back on, turn your bike back around and off you go.